All right, guys, welcome to part four of the build series. All right, so I'm going to start out with uh, building the uh, primary jet and uh, plumbing in the, uh, the water drip feed tube. So typically what we do is uh, you're going to need a, an eighth inch MPT to a quarter um, compression fitting. And this jet, typically what we do is we uh, um, thread that into the, the, the bottom fitting of the water tank. And then we take a, just a normal compression fitting. This is eighth to quarter. And then what we do is we, we drill the inside out um, to a quarter inch so that we can slip the tube through it. And then when you put the compression fitting not on on it it locks it in place and the reason we do that is because you need to extend your tube inside um to the intake air holes of the of the jet and then as the air comes in through those holes right here there's four of them all the way around so you're going to need to drill these these are uh the whole size is uh five sixteenths but you can go three eighths and then you're going to have a tube going through the center. And then as the air comes in, it grabs the, the water at the end of the tube and pulls it into the gas fire and it, it atomizes it. And the reason you want to do that is besides atomizing the water, it breaks the water surface tension. Um, if you don't have a means to do that, then it'll just build up uh, surface tension and the flow will stop and it'll be inconsistent. So that's why we build it this way. But uh, I'm gonna do things a little different on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna experiment. Um, so what I did is instead of putting the, the valve on the water tank, I'm gonna actually gonna put it here and then just put a normal fitting in the bottom of the water tank, which I already have installed. So I'm just showing you this one for reference. But uh, I must warn you, because uh, I made a boo-boo. When I was uh, drilling this fitting out, um, I went with a size just under a uh, quarter inch. Uh, looks like, I can't quite see it on the drill, drill in that. That doesn't make any sense. 1364. Yeah. I don't know. It's just uh, the size under. If you have a full uh, drill index with uh, SE drills, um, it's just the size under a quarter. And then I was able to press this in there. But what I did is uh, the brass grabbed a, a hold of the drill and it sucked it in there. And I, I actually drilled the, the seat of the valve completely out. But I got lucky uh, when I uh, pressed the tube in. It acts as a seat, and I got a good airtight seal. Now, when I install this in the, the cap, this is tapered thread, so that's going to lock it in even even more. So it's going to be good and airtight when I when I finally assemble this. So let's go over the the parts to this guy here. All right, so. I'm gonna take it all apart so we can go one by one. All right, so this here is a threaded on one end, um, half inch stainless steel pipe. This is three, three and a half inches um, long. This here is a three quarter by two um, pipe nipple. And then this here is a one to three quarter reducer. And then we have a three quarter inch pipe cap. All right, so this is our our air housing. This is the three quarter by two. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your nipple and you're gonna thread that in like so, right? And then that installs in here. Now what I do is uh, I tap I tap the nipple in until the end of it is just to the bottom of the holes and then uh, you're gonna want to put a 
a bolt through this, put it in a vise, and crank this down. And because this is tapered pipe thread, this will act as a, a taper lock on, on this nipple. And then that way, if you need to replace this, you just undo it and, and, and knock that out, and you can replace a, a new nipple replace a new uh, uh, nozzle in your your nozzle assembly all right now this is our our valve set up this is the tube pre-cut that terminates just pat just inside of the nozzle inside there so this will go in just just past those holes okay so I'm gonna go ahead and fully assemble this and get everything locked locked down and then uh, I'll come back and we'll we'll install it in the the reactor and then we'll we'll uh, form our, our uh, quarter inch tube and get that all buttoned up all right all right guys I thought I'd uh, uh, film this while I was uh, assembling this so basically I got this um, tapped in to the, the three-quarter inch um, nipple and it's just enough to where I can get the bolt through I got this in the in the vise put a little pressure on it and then I'm gonna crank this down So this is that nipple is good and locked locked in there. That ain't that ain't coming apart. All right. So next step is to install this guy. because I'm going to adjust that one once we have that installed um, in the unit. So this is pretty much what it would look like once you got it fully assembled. And again, this is an eighth inch MPT, so you're going to have to get an eighth, eighth inch MPT tap and drill the center out. It's a three eighths um, hole for your tap and then thread that in, but don't overdo it because you want to be able to you want to have enough threads to apply pressure on your on your tube if you do go the route that that I am with uh, having the valve here. Um, all right, so I got this uh, threaded into the the primary jet port, and I'm not gonna put too much pressure on this. That's plenty tight. Um, you know, you don't want to overdo it because you want, you know, you may want to get this apart at some point. And um, yeah, you can really lock that in there good. All right, guys, so I went ahead and uh, bent up the tube, locked it all down. 
So as you can see, this is the final result. And I don't know if you can see in through there, but there's the tube. All right, so that is uh, the uh, primary jet complete. So the next step is uh, we're gonna install the uh, hopper latches. All right, so this is basically uh, fairly simple. Basically, just gonna center that, and then I'm gonna mark my holes, and I'm just gonna put this on on the the lip of the hopper. And as you can see, I'm gonna add this. This is gonna add another half an inch. So actually, um, let's see if I can find a marker. Just so we can uh, see what kind of distance that really is. Okay. So that's roughly three eighths of an inch um, difference. Um, so that should be plenty of holding force. You're going to have three of these on there. And you, you want to leave some for um, for movement so that it can flash back. Plus, you need to lift that off there. So that should work perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, um, lay this out for all three. Again, we're gonna use uh, the bolt pattern uh, of the unit to uh, determine the other the other two. You only need three, so we're gonna have one in the front, and then two in the back. And then I'm going to use the, actually the jet right here to align the two in the back. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then uh, we'll come back. All right, guys, so I have the uh, latches installed. So we have a good, yeah, I'm putting some force on this, and that's going to be good and sealed. And it actually takes quite a bit to get them off there. It's kind of cool as you can just twist them. And now we can remove the, the lid. All right, so next step is we're gonna go ahead and uh, install the, uh, the exhaust port. Now there's two ways you can do this. Um, you can come out the top or you can come out the back side. I'm going to come out the top on this one so that um, when I go from here to the uh, filter, that this is higher than where I go in at the filter. And that's to uh, get any uh, condensate draining into the filter rather than back into the, uh, the ammo box uh, ash clean out. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the, the ammo box, uh, final seal it um, to the reactor, and then install the, uh, the adapter. And this is just a one inch pipe flange adapter with a, with a 90 um, elbow. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll come back. All right guys, so I have the, the ash clean out box uh, installed. For good. Um, as you can see, I use the ceramic gasket material for the main flange. However, I did use the black RTV for the the exhaust adapter. And as you can see, that's installed. All right, so um, this concludes uh, the gasifier portion. So I'm gonna. Get this wrapped up and get it flipped back over onto its feet. And then uh, we're going to move on to the, uh, the filter. 
All right, guys, so I got it back on its feet. So uh, I think I'm actually going to conclude this uh, part of the build because um, this does conclude the gasifier portion. So as you see, she's back on her feet. This is what the, the adapter come out like. Kind of give you a walk around here. There's a flare cup. All right, so uh, I think in the next video, what we're gonna, going to cover is the, the filter and the blower. And I think I'm gonna do that tomorrow. It's getting late in the day, it's time to go home. So we're gonna do that, save that for another video. But uh, yeah, it's, this is gonna be fairly simple. It's just setting the stand up. Um, that just slips into the stand and then there's a pocket on the side. That's for your drain. So <clears throat> this pipe here will get mounted on, on the bottom and then you'll have an inlet. So this will be your inlet and that'll go somewhere right here. And that leaves from the rib down um, as a container for a condensate collection. And then the blower will mount up on top and then that flange and screen there is for a filter to keep your your, your filter out of the it's a filter to filter the filter <laughs> from the blower so that's to keep the filter media from getting sucked inside the blower um so we'll we'll, we'll go over that tomorrow and then uh of course you have your you'll have an exhaust port so that'll go up on top somewhere here we'll go over this white piece so you can see it better so that'll be the exhaust port and then uh what's cool about this is we may add additional inputs and we might plug the dfx into this unit or possibly plug this unit into the dfx uh ports on the uh on the fusion um i don't know yet but we definitely are going to be networking this with a dfx at some point and here's some other stuff. Um, oh yeah, the, these are your, we're gonna have to install more latches for, the, for this. You're not gonna use this band clamp. Do not use these band clamps. This needs, you need to have a, a means to um, vent these vessels in case um, you do have a flashback. So you need, some, you do not wanna have them on there. Um, uh, I've got a whole adapter. Oh, this here is a cap for for the drain. You could put a ball valve on there, but it's really not necessary. All right, guys. So I'm going to conclude part four, and we will uh, see you in the next, uh, and hopefully, well, no, it won't be the final one because I am going to test run. I, I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about, gasifiers and talk about building them we're actually going to run it and whether it's successful or not i'm going to show i'm going to show it you know we'll we'll run it and you know if we tire up that engine i'm going to show you the, the reality of of this technology okay so we'll see you in the next video